if we analyze this picture here we have some half tone effects here and then if you notice the picture here the portrait it's also, it's also half tone now the original image or photograph is a colored photograph and then I just change it to a half tone so we're going to talk about that too now in this one here too these are the background here it has a transparency and we also use a, a half tone uh, circles here but anyway we're going to talk about that later so the original image here is this one here okay so now if we compare that here so the first thing we have to do here is to make this image as a grayscale image so first you go to bitmap and then click on convert to bitmap and then in here um, the resolution since we're doing it half tone and we don't want it to be really high resolution uh, 96 dpi would be fine uh, keep it 96 dpi and uh, make it grayscale 8 bit and then make sure the transparent background is turned on to or checked and then click OK now we have a a grayscale image here now in in styles like this in half tones like this uh, it is better to keep the contrast higher looking at this photograph here the grayscale photograph um, the uh, there's not a lot of contrast in this image here so what we're going to do we're going to bump up the contrast so that you will see some highlights here in the in the uh, the half tone effect here see that highlights is the contrast the higher contrast so you we click on the image and then click on the uh, you can go to effects and then click on adjust and then click on brightness contrast and intensity and then in here you're going to have this dialog box here brightness contrast we are more concerned about the contrast so make the contrast higher going to the right side and click on preview and there and as you notice now that there is highlights in here now there's more highlights now I'm gonna bump it a little bit preview and I'll click OK I think we're okay now so now I click on the image and I go to bitmap and then click on color transform so when you click on color transform you have choices here choose half tone so I click half tone and then in here you'll see a preview of what you're getting here so this is the original and this is the the you know the applied effect now this max dot radius is the is the size of the dots okay now if you want to zoom in zoom out here you go to the the center and then you scroll down scroll up and scroll down to zoom in okay so now I'm going to make it let's try to go 8 first and click on preview okay so I'm just gonna zoom in so I click here and then preview again okay so looking at this we're gonna compare it to the original one uh, the the dots is a little bit too big so I'll make it 7 here and I click on preview okay it's getting there I'll try 6 here preview okay uh, let's try 5 okay so I think 5 is fine so if I'm if you're happy with that one like I'm happy with that so I'll click on click OK now I have this half tone image now now 
if you notice the original is the original is the color of the dots is kind of orangey okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to click on the the half tone image here that we already applied the effect and then since it's grayscale we can't really change the color to a different color because it's grayscale so what we're going to do is we're going to make this back to bitmap rgb so you click on this go to bitmap convert to bitmap again but this time instead of grayscale we bring it back to rgb 96 dpi is fine and then click ok Okay. so now we have a an rgb uh, bitmap Okay, so I click on the bitmap again and then click on effects. This time we go effects and click on adjust and we're going to replace color. So when you click on replace color, you're going to have this dialog box here and then here you can change the color. Uh, let's say, let's just try green and then click on preview. And you notice it changes, right? Change it to blue, click on preview, changes. Now if I want to match it to this one here, so I'll get the color orange. Let's say this one preview. And yeah, so my I'm, I'm good. It's close. The color is close. Okay, and then I'll click OK. Now I already have a colored half tone here. Just one tone. Okay, now going back here there's like an outline okay on the portrait so what I'll do I'm going to use my Bezier tool okay I'm gonna create a path okay so Bezier tool click here here I'm just going to, to create a simple outline here And then later on, we're going to power clip it. And then I can close it. Close. There. there. Now I'm just going to do some adjustment here, like this one here. I'm going to see if you want to delete uh, a node here, just double click on it and it will be deleted and I'm just gonna make this straight okay I'm good now I'm going to power clip it to the path that I just created so I click on the image I know the image is selected because in here in the status bar it says there is the JPEG and I go to effects power clip place inside the container and the container is the path that I just created and I click on this one here there now if I move this here you would notice it's it's already clipped now I'm going to create an outline which is the same color as this one so I click on the eyedropper tool I'm just going to sample this color here or I shall sample this color here and then hold down shift okay well what happened is I sample the color and see it's here same way K does the values and then I go to my outline that I just did but I have to hold down shift and go to the outline see that one's the outline okay if if that icon shows up it means to say I'm going to change the properties of this outline to the same color as the one I sampled okay so click there if you notice now that the outline is not black anymore it's the same color as the half tone image now I'll just make it thicker so I click on the object I go to my outline tool outline pen 
I'll make it 3 see it, it increases outline pen let's say I make it 4 click on behind fields scale with image that's a good idea to check that click OK and I think I'm fine yeah I'm okay 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 now we're done with the portrait now we're going to uh, we're going to do the the background here so if I click on this object here I know it's a square because if you look at the property bar here and the width and the height is the same so it's a square now to create a square you go to your rectangular tool or F6 and if you want a perfect square you hold on control and then click and drag so that will create a perfect square okay. now if you also notice uh, the the uh, the corners here is rounded corners so what you do when you click on your square you go to your shape tool so once you click on the shape tool this one becomes highlighted or it becomes dark so you just click that and drag it to the right okay and you can set the so you can set the the radius okay let's say I'm happy with that okay so now I've got this square what I'm going to do first is I'm going to move this portrait over to the left side and we're going to insert that later because we're just concerned about the background first okay so I click this square which is with a radius corner what I'll do I'll copy that and just keep it in the clipboard because later on we're going to put a border all around the the artwork so I click on the the square and I go to copy or control C okay then I'll just leave it there in the clipboard now looking at this one here it has like a path curved path so what I'll do I'm going to go to my Bezier tool click here and then click over here okay. now it has a radius uh, yeah it, it's a curve so I click on my line that I created go to my shape tool click on the center here of the segment and I go to my convert line to curve so once you convert line to curve you're gonna have these two arrows or what you do you can click and then reshape or shape the shape it with the arrows there okay so I'm fine with that now what I'm going to do I'm going to put a smart fill click on smart fill and I'm going to click on this area here so that I can get the shape because that's the shape that I wanted then I can delete this line okay. so I click on this oh, what I'll do I'll just sample this color here and then pour hold down shift and then pour okay, okay. I'm going to remove the outline right now. Let's click on this one here. Now this one is a half tone effect. Right? So what I'll do, I will I'll move it up here and I'm going to create a circle first. Hold down control to pick a perfect circle. And then we're gonna do a half tone line. So plus sign in your keyboard to duplicate without offset and move it to the right side a uh, left side when you're moving it to the right side sorry left side you hold down shift to make a straight path see I'm holding down shift and it makes a, a straight path okay. now I have two circles now but the other circle should be smaller so I click on it okay 
hold down shift okay, hold down shift and then grab this handle here and go inside so I'm just resizing it going, going small now I select these two circles I go to effects click on blend and then here in blend this is the docker of blend this is the number of steps let's say I'm going to start with 10 steps rotation would be 0 and then I click on apply see now you have that Okay, so it's not enough I'll make it 20 type in 20 steps click on apply there I think this is fine or not I'll just make it 18 click on apply there now I have this and and then I am click on the blend like this is the blend you go to arrange break blend apart break blend group apart okay and then I'm going to so it's if you ungroup this one click on this one it's separate objects now right well what I'll do, what I'll, do I'll blend all of this oh, sorry no blend I'm going to uh, weld it okay welding is if you look at this one here I'm going to select everything here and then I go to weld you go on to this icons here for weld and notice this one here those intersecting lines if I click on weld see it's it becomes uh, one whole object okay so now I'm going to blend it again so click on this one plus sign in your keyboard and move it down while you're bringing it down you hold down shift and control to make a straight path going down here I think that would be good now we're still going to blend these two so click on the first one hold down shift and click on this one and then I'll make this I'll start with six for the blend apply mm. so six is fine now that's for that one so I'm going to color this with white and then no outline so right mouse click on this one now since it's white I'm going to bring it down there okay now what I did here is I made a uh, a uh, a transparency so I click on the white dots go to your interactive transparency tool and then I'm going to make it uniform so it's uniform now in order to remove this lines here what you're going to do is you're going to go to arrange break blend group apart and then weld it here click on weld so it will be one whole object now it's one whole object okay. now now I'm going to power clip this white dots inside this this object here and uh, this this object here okay so I click on the white dots okay I know that's a white dots because here in the status bar it says white so that's my dots and then I go to effects power clip place inside a container and my container is this one here there so it's already inside the container if I move this one here it's inside the container the white dots I'm gonna undo that yeah now I'm I'm done with that effect now the second effect is the this one here the background the one with the swirl okay now for the swirl I'm going to zoom out here so I click on my bezier tool click let's say somewhere here and then I click here so that's my line ok 
okay I'm gonna make it a curve so click on my shape tool click on the segment and then convert line to curve and then I'm going to make it swirl let's say let's say that one okay so that's good now here what I'll do I'll I'm gonna close this first I click on this line that I just made and I go to arrange transformation and I'm going to go rotate okay now let's see this one here so I click on rot uh, transformation then this docker will show up okay now the next thing I have to do is I'm going to change the rotation pin okay so where do you get the rotation please pin if I click on the line and click one more time this one is the rotation pin I'm going to put that into the center here I mean the endpoint of this one here so I click that okay so I have the change already so now here the angle let's say I go 12 degrees or yeah I go 12 degrees okay and then you click on apply to duplicate okay there apply to duplicate until you finish the the curve there okay. so I have that now and what I'll do I'm going to put a so go to my smart fill and I'm going to click on this for the alternate uh, for the alternate design here and there here here and the last one okay. now I zoom out here so I don't need I don't need the lines anymore so I'm just going to delete all of these Here I can finish deleting it so now I'm going to select this swirly thing this one here so I make a crossing window and I'm going to first remove the outline by right mouse click on this one and I go to my my fill here I go fountain fill okay so I'm going to go instead of linear I'm going to go radial so now I'll start with orange and then I'll make this say light yellow and then click OK here there that looks good I like that okay now we're I'm done with that okay so now what we're going to do is this circle here okay so we already have the portrait and then we already have the background here so the the only two things that we have to do is we're gonna do the text here and also this background here okay. if you notice the background has transparency in it okay. now the background this one is also the same concept as this swirl here so first I'm going to create a circle click on ellipse tool hold on control to make a perfect circle and then uh, I am going to duplicate this so plus sign your keyboard so those are two objects already on top of each other then before dragging it to the right side hold on control and then drag it to the right and then make this smaller okay hold down shift and then resize so that we go to the center okay and I'm going to select this two and I go to effects blend I'm going to blend that those two so I'm gonna start with 10 this is the steps number of steps and then click on apply and uh, I think I have to make it 12 here click on apply or maybe uh, say 15 click on apply ok 
Okay, I'll leave it by 12 and click on apply. Okay, so remember we checked this one and it's also transparent. So what we'll do, we're going to make that transparent too. So I'm going to select the blended object and then click on this magenta here. And then remove the outline by right mouse click on this icon here. So I have no outline there. Okay, I can resize that. And then I can do transparency. So click on your interactive transparency tool, which is this one. And you go here, click on uniform. There. You notice it is a transparent object already. Now we're going to uh, rotate this with a duplicate. So I go to my arrange transformation, click on rotation. Remember the rotation center, we have to change it before doing the uh, rotation. So I click one more time and this one show up, shows up. So that's the center of rotation. I move it to the very first circle that I did, the bigger circle. Okay, So that once it's rotated, the center would be in here. Okay, so I'm going to put, uh, I'm going to start with 10 angle and then click on apply to duplicate okay that sounds that looks good uh i'm gonna do first i'll make it let's say i make it six degrees and click on apply to duplicate yeah that's more interesting i think so i click on apply to duplicate until i i complete the whole turn so it's a very very nice design once you play around with the transparency and then until it closes and now that will close okay I'm just gonna do that last okay very nice now I'm gonna group this control G or click on this icon here I'm going to close this docker here I'm going to move it to the center here. Okay. Now we didn't really made exactly the same, but that's okay. So I'm going to move it here. That's the background. Right. And then I'm going to duplicate this plus sign your keyboard. And I'm going to move it to the left side. Then I can color it with a different color, let's say orange, maybe red, or maybe I'll try pink first. Let's say orange. I can resize it and I can move it. I can overlap it. Okay, since it's transparent, so it will it will have a really nice effect. I will change it to. Okay, let's do that one or maybe I'll make it red there okay we'll make it different with the original so plus on your keyboard and then move it da down and then I'll make that yellow uh, maybe this goldish yellow here okay so you got yellow there and then plus sign again to duplicate I'm gonna put another one here let's try to play with colors here so I'm gonna try with this one or I can even try green if I want to okay okay now let's let's just leave it like that okay now I have that so what I'll do I'll move this portrait of mine going here going to move that to front to so arrange order to front of page and I'll put white I'm going to fill it with white because now it's transparent right the power clip is transparent so if I go to my white here it will make it opaque and then I'll put this one to front, so arrange order 
to front of page yeah I'm just going to do some adjustments here the outline is going to make it thicker uh, okay the current one I can make it eight points there I'll do it I'm gonna change it to 10 points okay okay now I have this I can move it around okay so okay now the the last thing to do is the font or the text so you type in summer enter and then heat okay. so I have this text here and the font is uh, brook 23 that's the font that I used and uh, okay to separate that I go to arrange break artistic text apart so these are two texts now move it here and I'm going to move this here okay so now it's the we're gonna change the the font color to this one here and if you notice there's no outline in here there is so we go to your outline tool and then you go to outline pen okay let's try eight points with white outline and behind fill it's best to check this two and then click OK okay that looks good and we're going to do it the same with this one here now if you want to have the same properties as this one okay you, you click on this text heat right and then you click on edit you go to copy properties from so we're going to pro copy the property of the outline pen of this the outline color just white the fill and uh, no need for text properties because this one is the same font as that one already and then click OK and then this one will show up and then it was has an arrow so you just click on this one because we're copying that property and see it automatically copies the properties of the outline pen and the outline color okay now we are almost there so you click on this one you see there's like a hard drop shadow here which is a white okay so to do that you click on this and then you copy it to so plus on your keyboard and then move it move it there first and then fill it with white all white text okay now of course the this one should go front so you click on that magenta text there and then you go arrange order to front of page and then move this white text there or you can use your arrow keys same thing with this plus on your keyboard offset it a little bit and put white and click on the magenta color text and then order to front of page and then adjust the white text there now we are going to get the uh, remember in the first part we copied the that square with the radius corner now this time we're gonna paste it so click on paste here or control V so that's the one and then we're going to make a thick outline outline pen I'm gonna make it try 16 it's a magenta outline behind fill scale with image and then click OK Okay, it's too thick we go back to our outline pen and then we go 12 it's 
still sick we go 10 and click OK there you go now it's done the only thing to do is to check all the corners like for example here this one shows up so you click on that you go to your shape tool okay and then I'm going to add a node here so double click on this line okay I'm doing the portrait power clip double click to add a node and I'm going to move this one going this way here so you don't see it anymore and that's it very nice